What's up guys, this is Federico from Wave Motion Recordings. Today I'm here at the NAMM Show 2019 in Anaheim, California. So let's go check it out. First of all, let's see some guitars. I think Ibanez has been releasing better and better guitars every year. Um, they released new RGA models which come stock with Bernacle Aftermaths and new RGD models which instead are equipped with Fishman Fluences and Dimarzios. These guitars look like boutique instruments to me and I really like the Black Bursts and the Blue Burst ones in particular. These are the new models from the S series. I love the red back personally, and they're equipped with Fishmans as well. A lot of guitar companies have started selling their guitars with Fishman pickups. They're kind of the cool thing of the moment, but they do sound great. Scurves and Guitars are one of my favorite companies. The craftsmanship is perfect. I recorded a few, and they're just so easy to play with. If you're not familiar with Aristides guitars, take a look at their website in the history section. These guitars are quite special because they're not made of wood, but by a new material that they developed and called Arium. They have incredible sustain and note clarity. I finally had the chance to see in person the red layer guitars, and they look beautiful, just take a look at how crazy the inlays are. This one's my favorite, it looks very unique, and of course it looks even better in person. I have no idea how long it takes to build one of these beasts, I'm guessing a lot, but I think it's worth it. Most of them are equipped with Langren pickups, uh, I wanted to give them a try but there was no amp in the booth, so next time. Kizer released some new models, like these nice acoustic guitars, and of course there were many of their classic designs. I'm not that into headless guitars, uh, personally, but if that's your cup of tea, and especially if you want a multi-scale guitar, Kizer's are a pretty great choice. This is the uh, signature model for Lee McKinney from Born of Osiris. I think Kizzle's great with finishes, uh, really makes the wood grain pop. And I'm usually not a fan of sparkle finishes, but the ones they make uh, just look great. Solar Guitars is the company founded by Ola England just a few years ago. I didn't have the chance to try one of these guitars yet, but they do look cool and uh, they're pretty affordable, especially considering that most of them are equipped with um, an Evertune bridge so they must be great to the guitars. Ormsby released the Rusty Cooley signature model, the one in blue, and the camo red and black signature model for Dino Cazares. I wasn't very familiar with Legator guitars, besides, you know, reading the name online a few times. But I gotta say, these looked impressive. I think the model's called Ninja, and these are also Fishman equipped, so I'm guessing they sound great. Mayones guitars really need no introduction. These guitars are amazing, craftsmanship is perfect, and they're so easy to play.
Strander guitars uh, released a new model, is this one on the right column. And of course it's a nod to a classic design. And it's available in 6, 7 and 8 strings. They also had a few prototypes. As you can see, um, they will start to use a true temperament in some of the guitars, which is pretty cool. And they will also start doing some neck through models. GNG Guitars is a luthier from Italy. He's been building a name for himself, and rightfully so, because his attention to detail is just amazing. A bass guitar is kind of the hot topic of the moment. I didn't have the chance to try one, because every time I walked at the booth there was already someone else playing. But I held one in my hands and it felt really comfortable. Acacia Guitars wasn't familiar with the brand, but they look cool, so check them out. Music Man released new Majesty models and the cool thing is that they released some of them in their more affordable Sterling series, which is great. Paul Reed Smith released many different variations of their classic models, but I think the coolest one is this fan fret A string one. They also said they were gonna do more in the future, so fingers crossed. Fender had their usual walls of custom guitars, but they also released some new models. They reissued their old design from the 60s called uh, Electric 12, so that's a 12 string guitar. This is called the Powercaster, um, looks like a new body shape to me with a humbucker and a single coil. This is where things get strange, because this is called uh, Tenor Tele, a uh, four string, short scale. I don't really know what to think about it, but I really, really want to try one. Next is the 66 model, jazz bass like shape, one unbucker, two single coils, looks very versatile. Matera, new body shape, I think it will look cooler on stage, but I like it. Moving on to bass, this is Dingwall's booth. Um, they have new combustion models, new NG3s, new d birds new colors. Dingwall has been killing it lately, and the bass is just sound incredible. These are the new Bowden basses by Stramberg, um, they come in both 4 and 5 strings. And they have this signature Stramberg neck shape that made the guitars famous. I tried one of these and I think you need some time to get adjusted but once you do they're really comfortable. The folks at Kiesel are also thinking about the bass players out there. Lots of models, lots of finishes. Um, they just released the new Zeus multi-scale headless bass, it's this one, uh, which I think looks great. Now let's move on to some amps. As you might know, Kemper released uh, its own cabinet. It's a 1x12 passive speaker made by Selection. And thanks to the DSP of the Kemper, it will be able to mimic different speakers. Now people have been requesting a software Kemper editor for a while now, and it looks like it's finally happening. You will be able to change all the parameters in your Kemper through this editor, and it will be included in a new version of Rig Manager coming out later this year. I'm a huge fan of Omega Amps, and this head lives up to the hype. There's a detail knob that makes your guitar tone more clear and defined, and makes it so much easier to cut through the mix both live and in the studio. Their cabs are also great, lots of low end, I think I'm gonna get one sooner or later. Mezza Barba is an amp maker from Italy, here's the great Marcos Fogli demonstrating one of his heads. I had the chance to record the M0 overdrive head and it was one of the best rock amps I've used, so if you have the chance, give it a try. 
Here I was testing the new Darglass X7, which is an incredible pedal. You can blend a clean low end and a distorted high end, so you can pretty much get a finished tone right out of it. It's great. More pedals, this is the Dark Sun by Seymour Duncan, the new signature pedal by Mark from Periphery. It is a digital reverb and delay pedal with a ton of options. EQ section, 8 delay modes, expression pedal and a ton of other stuff. You can choose if you want to go delay into reverb or the other way around. Earthquaker devices, um, these pedals are great and these guys have the best YouTube channel. If you're a gear nerd, be sure to check it out. So Electro Harmonics has been releasing so many pedals in the last few years and some of them are pretty strange but still very unique and creative. These are some more pedal companies that you might not have heard of. So if you haven't, make sure to check them out. The last part of the video is about the Pro Audio section and the studio stuff. So if you're a studio guy like me, this place is pretty much like Disneyland and you won't be able to stop yourself from taking pictures and videos of everything that has knobs on it. So as you can see, that's exactly what I've done. Wes Audio just released a 500 series interface which looks cool, but if you're not familiar with the brand make sure you check them out because they have analog modules which can be controlled digitally via USB and this allows for easy and quick recalls and that is so time saving and efficient, just like a digital workflow but using analog equipment. I recently upgraded my monitoring system and got myself a pair of Amphion 118s. These monitors are just incredible, lots of clarity, definition and separation. So Access Analog is another pretty cool new thing. Um, they basically have hardware effects and you can reamp through them via the internet. I can actually see this becoming a thing. So the show is now ending and it was great. I hope you guys liked the video and if you did please leave a comment and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys next time.